a lot of women say they're like, you know, let's empower each other, but like not very many actually mm -hmm. do. And I think some no's are real no's, but I, I personally think that most no's are just an, like a maybe. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so you're saying no, but I think there's actually an alternative solution there's, that I can come room. up with that will make you say yeah. maybe. Hey guys, welcome to an all new episode of HB Fit TV. Today, we are here with Anya Santana who is the founder of Menos Mas, which is an amazing skincare brand. Um, and I wanted to chat with you today. So we have been friendly over Instagram for yeah. a while. We have friends in common. We finally met up and I felt like we, we were telling each other very similar stories for sure. And clearly finishing yeah. each other's sentences. <laughs> um, so, okay, I wanna introduce you to my audience, to the community, for those who don't already know you. Um, so tell us, like, take us back. Like, I want to hear from to the beginning. the beginning. Yeah, I want to okay. hear all about the story. So I'm from New York. I'm from the Bronx, uptown. And I had really terrible, like, cystic acne growing up, like, up until I was, like, 22. And I went, I told you, I went to, like, a dermatologist, Dr. Michael Mann, and he's just, like... I was like, give me Accutane, like, I don't care. Right. I need it. And he was like, no, I'm not prescribing you anything. Um, get some vitamin E oil, get some superfood um, powder, drink a gallon of water a day, and start reading ingredient labels and, like, watch your diet. And I just went down the wormhole of, like... Can we just give a shout out to Dr. Yes. Michael, what's his last name? Man. Michael Mann. If I feel like if I had access to a dermatologist who gave me that advice, I can't even tell you. I mean, it would just be a different type. It's a, a huge difference and, in how you like move in life. Totally, and it's funny because you showed up there being like, give me the Accutane, where in my case, I was suffering from really bad acne after college, went to a dermatologist, and all they were doing was giving me antibiotics yeah, over and over. and peels and all these things. I was and like, nothing no. was working. It doesn't work because your skin adapts to it. And right. it just like, it gets used to it. And he was like, no, I'm not giving you anything. He's like the same. I remember he was like the same soap you use for your body. You should use for your face. It should be just as mild. Because it, sh I mean, it should be a sensitive. Wow. For the rest of your body. Like we don't, we're not like rolling wow. in mud that we need to be like. That's crazy. Yeah, so harsh on our skin regardless. So he was like, get the mildest soap you can with the least ingredients and face to toe. At the time, I was like not well versed in clean beauty. So yeah. I would get like Dove, like the plain right. bar. Uh -huh. And I used that. I used vitamin E oil at night. And then I just started going back to like, the kitchen, like the vitamin E, I was like, well, what else can I mix here? And then I would use olive oil and I would use almond oil. And like cocoa butter is like every black girl's staple for stretch marks. Yeah. <laughs> so I just started like using that. Um, so I started to combine things and I made this like balm that mm -hmm. like cleared all of my hyperpigmentation and wow. like all of my, I mean, I, it was like black in the face. Wow. And it just cleared it. I used my dad and my brothers as guinea pigs because my dad built houses. So his hands are like rocks. Wow. And I would like make him slather it on and then sleep with mittens on. <laughs> and then like he would wake up with soft hands. Wow. So I'm like, okay, this is like, this is a thing. Yeah. That was like, I would say like eight years ago. Wow. And I would just do it for me and like friends and family. I would package it in like little old medicine bottles for friends and family. And then I just kind of fell into like the, oh, I can't come up with the perfect name with like, it needs to be this, it needs to be that. And I knew I wanted it to be like really simple. But you know, like time goes by, you get like second, like secondhand, you guess yourself. Yeah. And then I was just like, put it on the back burner, just kept making it for myself. Right. Then I decided to move to Paris. <laughs> well, I started running and when I ran. Yeah, tell us a little bit about, yeah. so Anya, by the way, has an incredible, she ran a relay race from Santa Monica Pier to Las Nev Vegas. Nevada. Yeah. La yeah. So California to Nevada, a female relay race, which by the way, we this were one of the only female, all only female um, crews, crew, crews yeah. in the whole yeah. in the whole relay. It was amazing. So this is called the Speed Project. It's like this, like just get there. There's like no rules. I, I mean, it sounds terrifying it, to me, but it, it is. It's like you're 
on an RV and you're just like peeing in the desert, like you might get bit by a rattles. There's like, we had like snake spray. I was like, oh my God, oh my am God. I going to die out here? <laughs> like what is oh happening? You go out with like light in the middle of the night. There's nothing but like you just see like creatures looking at, it was insane. Wow. But we finished. It was amazing. So my running journey started out of a promise for my dad. I was just like talking to him and he was just like, yeah, back then, you know, like the first thing I saw on TV was a, the New York Marathon or something like that. I don't know. We were talking about like TVs or something. And I was like, oh, I'll start running for you. Like, I'll do it for you. Like, like, like if it's going to get groceries. And I had no idea what I got myself into. The first thing I did was the New York Half Marathon like five years ago. Oh, wow. And it was the hardest thing of my, first of all, it was freezing. Yeah. I finished in like, it was insane how slow I ran. It like, but I finished. But you finished. Yeah, like I dragged my leg to the end, but I finished. And from there on out, it was like my fitness journey began. I was right. so committed to like just getting better, just feeling good. And that was kind of like, first I did the plant-based thing, going vegan, which changed my entire life. Like my acne went away. Mm -hmm. There's so many layers to talk about when you're I know. getting. So like my acne went away when I went vegan. When I was 20, right around the same time I did the whole skincare. Right, like eight years ago. Yeah, so he was just like, to go back to that, I start. I read the China study. Yep. I, my dad read the China study and went vegan. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. it's like the. I'm like, you. How could you not? You know. Right. It's not because I, I. For me, it's not because I don't like animals or I don't think we shouldn't eat them. I just don't think American food production is agreed. Right. Like it's just not real food. Agreed. And. I mean, even with the organic thing, it's like you're growing it 500 yards away from not organic. Is it really? Right. So many layers to it. But totally. The animal thing, I just can't get behind. Um, especially once you've traveled and you've tasted like food in Italy and in Morocco. I'm like, yeah, this is not real what we're eating right. back home. So right. I'm just not eating it. Um, but yeah, 30 days after I, I did a 10 day juice fast. Um, and right after that, I never ate meat again. Wow. I went straight vegan. I, my period went from eight days to five. I did not get any cramps for the first time in like 22 years of my life. Wow. Um, and my skin cleared completely, like completely. Like I may get a zit like I have now. And yeah. Your skin looks perfect, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, I've never... I've never gotten acne again. And when I've like, I've tested it out. Like sometimes you cave and you like, yeah, you go back a little. Right. The next month I'll get like a breakout or I'll get like severe cramps again. So I'm like, okay, there, I, it's a correlation. Yeah. For, you're, for me, you're like, aware. I think the hormones in the meat and my body, it's just like not. Well, I think also what's so interesting about your health journey and also about like wanting to test things out because it's true. I feel like for me, I'm constantly trying to test things out and the only way that I know if something's working or not or not working is by the pure fact that I listen to my body and I can like I have a, I'm very in tune with my body. Right. Which it sounds like now oh, you I'm so, are like it's so automatic for me and it's such I feel really privileged. Like it's such a privilege to be like aware of yourself and mm -hmm. know when something's off and like being able to recognize that because so many people don't. They think a headache is like something else is wrong and i'm like right. maybe you're just dehydrated that's right. like you know like just don't listen because they don't know where to right. start and it's such a privilege to be like in tune with myself totally and it's the start of like being happy for me mm -hmm. if uh, aside from that i'm like i wouldn't even know how to be happy in my life if i'm not like well with me on the inside right sometimes you're made to especially where i come from you're made to feel crazy or you're just like it's almost like i mean in america in general right like you have this, here's this band-aid, here's this pill, here's this. Mm -hmm. It's never like, try this like lavender, try taking a bath, right. try eating. It's never any of right. that. Right. Well, it's like we, we do not focus on alternative or preventative. The layer of stress you're taking off society just by like not worrying about your health. Totally. It's insane how much we don't care about people here. I know. That's That was a major factor in me moving abroad. Like yeah. I want to be able to want to afford having children and having them have good free education which we don't have here right and like quality of life matters right. i don't want to i mean i love new york i love the hustle and bustle 
But I want to know that it's okay for, to be off. I want to know that I want to enjoy summer and have right. wine for two hours for dinner and right. like actually talk and like let my food digest and right. not go straight to bed. And those things matter to me. Like mm -hmm. I watch my parents kill themselves growing like just to raise us. And I'm like, when did you have a second for you to enjoy life? You mm -hmm. didn't. If you do, if you're lucky enough to have a job that has like benefits, you get 10 days, two weeks out of the whole year. Right. And you can't even afford to go anywhere because like it's so many layers. Totally. But yeah, that was just such a huge factor. And then just kind of wanting to follow my gut. And again, back to the listening to myself from a little girl, I wanted to go to Paris. I didn't even know like why. I just like knew in my soul. I don't know. I felt like I was in a Woody Allen movie or something. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what Paris is, but I want to go there. And I went after a breakup. And when I came back, I was like, I'm moving there. And I didn't. And then four years later, I was like, okay, I'm going. I marked my calendar. Like, it was a summer. Breakup was like, it was done. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who am I? Like, I don't know anything about myself. I couldn't even stare myself in the mirror. Like, wow. I was just so lost. Um, and I was like, okay, I can either start acting and wellness here, or I can just, like, take wellness abroad and, like, just pursue my dreams mm -hmm. I can, and I was like okay well I can always become an actress at any age I can't always get up and go to Paris so I just literally circled a date on my calendar after January bought a one-way ticket that Sunday I went to my family and I was like family I have an announcement and they were like what now like what are you up to now and I was just like I'm moving to Paris and they're like okay she must be going through it oh my god I love <laughs> like, it I love it. And they just ignored me, and I did. So let's go back to Manos Moss. Yeah. And creating those products, because clearly eight years ago, when you were figuring things out in your kitchen and for, your, for yourself, yeah. you know, you stumbled upon a creation that was working. Yeah. So take us from, like, inception to now. To now. It's gone through so many stages. Stages. When I moved to Paris, at the time, four years ago, I mean, there was no... Glossier was just starting out, but it was quite small. But mm -hmm. there were no, like, back then, clean beauty brand or organic. It's like, you know, like that Kitch mom and pop yeah, kitchen-y yeah. look. Yeah. And I didn't want that. Right. So that was, like, the first phase. First, we were unisex. Right. And I didn't want that look. And there was really not that much on the market that appealed to that. So that was, like, our take. Mm-hmm. And just having kind of like the base, a good moisturizing cream, like face to toe, um, a good mask and a good exfoliator. Mm -hmm. So we did kind of two of everything, things that I love that I use internally. I kind of found the way to make them work externally, externally as well, because yeah. our whole thing is being healthy from the inside out. Right. Because beyond a brand, we are a lifestyle and similar to HB Fit, mm -hmm. it's like everything matters everything it's, matters everything matters like there's no point in using 400,000 creams right if your gut and your body <laughs> miss hoarder here <laughs> if your like body on the inside is rotten right. so it's really like an education of like right. how to be well from the inside out and mm -hmm. that's really true beauty mm -hmm. the bonus industry is such a luxury and it's not fair because the people who deserve it the most are the ones who like it's so unattainable too. Right. So it's just like, I want to speak the, to the people that speak my language, who use yo, who mm. use like mm -hmm. slang, who, you know, love culture and we're rich in, in everything and we don't want to sacrifice that. Right. And so I'm just, now we're just like a brand really wellness for the culture, just dedicated to celebrating who we are and making ourselves better. I love that. By like, yeah, introduce, there's so many rappers and musicians and DJs in, in the city who are, I mean, you're one of them. You mm -hmm. changed, you kind of took DJing and totally. made it work in your lifestyle. Right. And there's so many other people who are doing the same and nobody talks to them. And those are the people that I love and adore and I want to highlight. So let's talk about this. So Black Women in Wellness, I feel like I can name all of us on all four of our hands. Yeah. Which is about 20 people. Right. <laughs> so... Um, not to say there's so many more, but we don't there get are the same anymore. We don't get the same light. Some of us don't get like the same. And it's, it's hard. I feel like I, I feel like I follow a really good amount of black women in wellness on the gram, which I, I'm very thankful for the gram because it allows me to seek out 
things that make me feel good and make me feel included. Sometimes I really need to like search and dig and like find Fine. those communities. They don't just pop up. No, and with the algorithm, I'm like, sometimes I'll go a week and I'll be like, wait, I haven't seen this person in my feed. Yeah. I haven't heard this person's voice or like what they're talking about. And then sometimes I go in like a black hole where I'm like, you know, reading everything that like Latham's talking about, right. for instance. And then I'm like, then I find six more people. Right, that because I can the algorithm call. will like right. put you in that sphere. But it was already segregated. It's like totally. It's like wellness for this particular pe these type of women, and then there's like, we're doing the same exact thing, but it doesn't. It's like just completely segregated. Totally. I don't know why. I mean, well, we know why, yeah. but yeah. But then you and now with algorithm, it's even more segregated because you just like, if you follow this crew, then you'll just get those type of girls, and if you follow like this type of girl, then you'll get like everyone else, and it's just like making it so much worse. Mm -hmm. I want it like. For a while, I found myself complaining about like, well, why am I not in these spaces? Why? And I was like, you know what? Make them see you. Like, be the change you want to see. And I mm -hmm. literally just knocked down the doors, and I did not stop until like they let me in, and I'm here, mm -hmm. and they're accepting me. And yeah, I'm like creating the voice that I wanted to see in this world, and mm -hmm. that's so important because we're told no so much. I mean, something that I've been like something that I love about what I c can do here at HP Fit and like being a, a voice in 2018 is putting it like putting on other women oh and, yeah like being able to put on women of color specifically is something that I find super rewarding so I'm constantly trying to find women that I can like put on and actually I was really excited to know that you went on um Naked Beauty with Brooke. Oh my God, Brooke is amazing. Brooke is amazing. So I've known Brooke since she was little. We used to go to school together. Amazing. Yeah, she's a couple years younger than me. So I remember her in her little school uniform. But like being able to put other people, other women on is super important for me. And so that's one thing that I feel like I'm at least contributing to breaking down those walls right. is putting women on, women of color on and really like highlighting their story their struggle their realizations their breakthroughs um because it's so relatable for so many women whether you're in the wellness space or right. not. and and it's like a lot of women say they're like you know let's empower each other but like not very many actually mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. with me i just hope to be a champion of my people right especially like i'm a latina i'm dominican you know there's not, I latch on to the black community because we don't have voices. Right. We don't have Latin women, or if they are Latin, they don't look like me. They're not brown. They don't have nappy hair. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to see people that are just like me. I'm also not like, for better, like, you get that a lot. Like, you're not Dominican enough, or like, you're not black um, enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never heard that line before. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> And I'm like, why? Like, why do I have to be a, in a box? But it's interesting. Like, I love a good no. Like, I mean, obviously, it comes I, with, like... I, no, I think what I no's, cry. no's make you stronger. Oh, yeah. Like, everything better, like, good and great in life comes with a good, like, painful heartache. Yeah. A good rejection. Mm -hmm. Like, every if you are able to just process that pain and just keep going... Mm -hmm every success is better everything is your story is so much richer and like the gains are like triple what you wanted them to be absolutely and i think some no's are real no's but i i personally think that most no's are just an like a maybe yeah and i'm like okay so you're saying no but i think there's actually an alternative solution there's, that i can come up with that will make you say yeah maybe yeah that's like you just keep knocking on the door mm -hmm. like if, the, if that's another way to save mm -hmm. like they don't open the door and knock it down mm -hmm. exactly it, yeah and it's just go around back open yeah. the window <laughs> hello <laughs> like i'm still here <laughs> tell me a little bit about how paris and living in paris has influenced your products um and influenced kind of like the way you tell your story now because now i feel like you you left new york you went to paris you got like a different point of view right i think what makes french beauty so amazing is that they don't give a shit right they're so like i'll just throw on this cream and have my cigarette and i'll be fine you know like 
That's crazy. I've been to work, and you go to Paris quite often, but I've gone to workouts where, like, we'll get out of a good yoga class, and they're like, that was so hard. I need a cigarette. I'm like, we just... We just worked out for 90 minutes and you want a cigarette? Like, that's insane. It's insane, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, women still smoke while they're pregnant there. Oh, yeah, they don't care. And wine, it's just like, oh, I'll be fine. Right. Which is like... there. I have to say, for, it, it must be mentally a release and, like, and like stress. Not stress-free, but, like, less stress. Well, you care like, less. Because you care less. And so you're not, I mean, not to say that they're not as invested, because I'm sure they are, but they just... They just move different. They have, like, this this carelessness. Like, right. okay, uh, it's this, like, confidence, even sexually, like, that we don't have as women. Like, we're, like, men are supposed to do this, and women are supposed to do that. And they're, like, they own right. everything about themselves. Like, right. If I'm going to be insecure and batshit crazy, this is who I am. And, right. I mean, they're insecure and all that, but, you know, and they have the same problems we do, but they own it. Especially, I definitely see it in, like, beauty, and then I see it in sex sexually. Like, women mm -hmm. are like, I'm not going to wait for a man to ask me out. I'm going to ask him out. Right. There is, I, if I want to fuck him, I'm going to, like, go and sleep with him. Right. We're like, oh, no, you got to wait 90 days. And the, this, right. this is a date. He has to text me back first. They don't go they through don't, it. Yeah, yeah, they don't even. They just, like, if I, they they fulfill their own desires right they we're, own it they own it we're, we're like follow we're, all these rules yeah and we're like, still you know, trying to figure, figure it, it out. out yeah so it's so different i my girlfriend had a got her gynecologist tell her like are you having orgasms every day and she's like no she's like if a man does not do it for you every day you do it for yourself whatever you need to it's the healthiest thing for you this is like she a wrote, French gynecologist said this? Yeah. She wrote an article okay. for Vogue. PSA, for <laughs> gynecologist <laughs> in New York. Get Women should be orgasming every, every day. day. Is that what the fountain of youth? It must be. She was like, it's good for your skin. It's <laughs> like, she's like, if you're not doing this, you're never going to be as happy as you could be. Like a whole like speech about having an orgasm every day. She does not care where it came from. And I'm like, yeah, maybe that's the secret to french beauty oh <laughs> like, my god <laughs> wait that's amazing yeah and those what? are like little everyday things that as women we don't get here okay let me get that guy knows number i'm gonna call him when <laughs> oh, I'm like, so <laughs> there's so much in wellness right whether it's like mental health and like eating and skincare and all this like endless cycle but it's the little everyday things mm -hmm. listen like quiet your mind, get off the phone, be okay with being scared, with afraid, with crying, with loneliness, with all these things that just ultimately are a process to getting to like the goal of just, I know who I am. Totally. Because I've never been, I, like, I would never want to be 20 again. I mean, <laughs> girl, <laughs> like, we're coming up on my 10 year anniversary of me shaving my head oh my God. and getting a tattoo. Wait, you have a tattoo on your head? A full head tat. Shut up. It's not full, I should say it's half. It's half of my head, but it's a full on head tat. Well, you went through it. Girl, you, let me tell you. Had you had your Britney moment. <laughs> the journey has been real. <laughs> it's been really real. Should I, th should I, maybe I should, do you guys want to see those pics? Let me know. Because if you do, maybe I'll post them. Um, because I literally am the girl with the dragon tattoo, so. That is crazy. You. Yeah. Talk I mean, if that's a not a time. breakdown. <laughs> talk about a time. And at the time, I was like, you know, I was like studying sculpture. I was at this liberal arts school. I was dating this guy, and he was like, you know, you're never going to go through with that. And I was like, you don't know me. And then I was like, next thing you know, I was like. <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> like, why what, did I do, what did I do this? <laughs> what, what is this? This is not a good dare to yeah, take it's on. it's insane. It was really insane. I'll have to show you a photo. I need to see that. All right, we're doing a quick fire round. We've never really done this um, in a couch couch session before. So that we're going to just give this a go. Okay. Don't, I won't look. Don't be over here I will try to be quick. Is. Okay. Favorite song to work out to? Anything ASAP Ferg. Okay. What does wellness mean to you? To feel good and like be my true self. Go to night out makeup. Exactly what you say. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Lips or eyes? Eyes. Whoever said that you weren't going to be good at this, by the way. <laughs> What's the hardest part about living in New York City? Um, the commute to the Bronx is so fucking real. It's unreal. <laughs> Favorite restaurant in New York City? Oof. Actually, right now, I'm really liking Narcisa. Oh, yeah. I love it there. I haven't been there in so long. I know. It's been a while. But um, I love it. It's really good. Yeah. They have, like, that, that carrot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know what the vegan likes. Favorite city in the world? Mm, can I have three? No. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> Uh, New York's home. Okay. Um, where do you want to travel to? Ooh, next I want to go to Ghana. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. What's one thing you wish more people knew? That it's okay to not know what's next. Like not, not just to not know, mm -hmm. like just be okay to be afraid or whatever it is you're in. It's okay. It's part of the journey. Love that. What's your favorite indulgence? Ooh, I gotta say my mom's rice and beans. Mm. Sounds banging. Are you inviting me over for some or what? Let's do it. Okay. What's something you've learned recently? Ooh, what have I learned? That's a bad one to slow down on. No. <laughs> um. um Oh, what I was saying earlier, that it's okay for me to be very specific about what I want. Like, whatever, if it's extravagant, it's not a bad thing. Cool, I love that. What does self-care mean to you? Um, again, to just uh, be happy with who I am and, like, just be present with myself. Mm -hmm. Last one. What do you want to be when you grow up? Ooh, I want to be a woman just like my mother who did it all. Sick. And does it all. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love that. Was that quick? That was so quick. <laughs> I was like, oh. I love that. <laughs> this was so good. So good. Okay, guys, that is all for today's HP Fit TV episode. Um, if you liked this, let us know. Leave some comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more HP Fit TV. And don't forget to follow Menos Mas on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and your personal Instagram. And me, Anya. Santana. Santana. <laughs> Not related to Carlos. <laughs> <laughs>